Kumar, petition has expired. Orders of the day. Ballot item number 25, private members notice of motion number 36, Mrs. Martel. Very much that in the opinion of this House, the Legislative Assembly of Ontario should stand firmly against any position or movement that promotes or encourages any form of hatred, hostility, prejudice, racism, and intolerance in any way, recognize the long-standing, vibrant, and mutually beneficial political, economic, and cultural ties between Ontario and Israel, built on a foundation of shared liberal democratic values, endorse the Ottawa Protocol on Combating Anti-Semitism, and reject the differential treatment of Israel, including the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. Thank you. Mrs. Marteau has moved private members notice motion 30, number 36. Pursuant to standing order 98, the member has 12 minutes for a presentation. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I want to start by saying that my name, Gila, is the Hebrew word for joy. And we had a press conference early this morning, and I'm to apologize if some people were there, and I'm repeating myself by saying that joy to me means approaching things with a positive attitude, not a negative attitude. And to me, that's one of the problems that I want to discuss is the boycott divestment sanctions movement. It's negative. If you have an issue with any policies of the Israeli government, if you have any concerns with any advocacy work by the Jewish community here or around the world, please discuss it with yourselves, discuss it among your clubs, discuss it with me, discuss it with all the Jewish organizations that are here today. We are so pleased to have discussions. It's what we do best. So I just spoke at a statement about volunteerism, and it's, uh, we were recognizing December 5th is the International Day of Volunteering, and one of the aspects of volunteering is to promote peace in the world. So I invite everybody to get involved in a positive organization and to help bring about that peace that we all so desire, not just in the Middle East, but all across the world, here in our uh, streets and on our university campuses, because, Madam Speaker, too often we are hearing that our university campuses sound more like a battleground of intolerance instead of that joyful place that I would like them to be and a positive place. It's uh, been more than a few years since I myself was on a university campus as a student. No. Um, yes, it's true. <laughs> and, um, and I have to say that... Um, I came back to my dorm room uh, one day and somebody had marked a swastika on my door uh, with a marker or a pen or something. And um, I said, I put sort of a positive spin on it and I said, well, I guess somebody's upset that um, I am in an optometry program at a fairly young age. I was only 19 years old and it has nothing to do with being Jewish or anything like that. Um, it's just strictly that it's a way to get under my skin and the door was painted and I just went on and uh, I forgot about it kind of and it's one of those things that pops back into your head every now and then and um, I'm a pretty um, I'm short, but I'm tough. That's what I'm told. <laughs> and um, I'm a pretty strong person. And um, I have to say that I found it hard I, when I was alone afterwards. I found it hard, even though I put a smile on my face, to deal with. So not every student on our campuses is going to school um, fully and emotionally. They might have parents at home who are sick. They might sell themselves be sick. And then if they have to walk on the campuses and incur hostility and see demonstrations that are demonizing the Jewish community and demonizing Israel, that affects their psychological well-being and it makes it different, difficult for them to continue their studies. We would not be here supporting a Ku Klux Klan on our campuses. So why are we allowing BDS movements and other anti-Jewish uh, community, anti-Israel uh, organizations to have demonstrations and use our campuses, which are taxpayer funded? It's a PR battle, Madam Speaker, and um, I hate to hear about people who um, want to hide behind freedom of speech because the boycott movement is actually not just boycotting Israel, it's boycotting voices. It's telling people, you cannot support Israel. 
It's telling people you cannot do advocacy work on our campuses. We're hearing reports of students who want to run for student councils, nothing to do with Jewish clubs or the Jewish community or anything, and they're told, um, we know that you're Jewish and you're a Zionist or you support Israel, or you've been to Israel, and we don't want you in our club. This, this is, it is shameful, Madam Speaker. Um, we want to remind, I think all the organizations here like to remind people that Israel is a vibrant country, that the boycott movement is failing, that foreign investment is going up in Israel, it's not going down. All it's doing is silencing some of those investors, which again is a boycott of those investors' voices. People here have cell phones. Unfortunately, many of the people in the gallery were shocked to find out that they weren't allowed to bring their cell phones in. So that's what a boycott feels like, because most of those cell phones have Israeli technology, I'd like to remind everybody here. Um, medical I innovations, other um, apps and software and things like that, that's why people are investing in Israel, is because they put a smile on their face and they get on with the work and the job of enjoying life and uh, not just surviving, but enjoying and trying to make the world a better place. It's a real mandate in the Jewish culture and the Jewish community to try to make the world a better place. And I myself had four children who at various stages of their development would approach me very quietly and say, why do they hate us? And what am I supposed to say to my children when they ask, why the Jewish community is so disliked and why Israel is so vilified in the world. And it's not something that just happened since the State of Israel was developed only 69 years ago. Um, th this has been ongoing for millennia, that the Jewish community is used as some kind of a scapegoat for um, problems in a country, uh, maybe to um, take away attention for, from bad governance or bad times or whatever, that somehow the Jewish community takes the blame. Yes, uh, we have a federal resolution that passed that was anti-BDS in Canada. Congress in the U.S. can't pass anti-BDS. 16 states have passed, and there's quite a few more that are looking to pass and may have even passed that I haven't heard of. Um, again, I want to remind people that BDS is the negative way of doing things. We've all heard of concerts that uh, have been canceled in Israel or concerts that went on in Israel and in fact the artists were encouraged to cancel but they refused to cancel. And uh, stickers that are being put in stores, private property, a store, a business owner who has products there that come from Israel and people are sneaking in and putting stickers on and saying boycott this product because it comes from Israel. That is not um, what I call a positive an encouraging way to promote peace or to promote any countries that surround Israel that are hostile to Israel. You want to help those countries. Um, perhaps it's a, a country even an enemy of Israel. You want to promote their products? Um, go ahead and promote their products. But don't try to encourage um, some kind of progress in those other countries by vilifying Israel. We all know that peace is, is not always easy to achieve. Uh, we've heard in committee uh, just yesterday we were talking about grandparents' right, uh, rights, and we were hearing from grandparents coming in and on the silliest thing, buying their grandchild uh, a candy, and the parents never allowed them to see the grandchild again and never spoke to them again. So within families, there are disagreements. So we can just imagine how difficult it is to broker peace agreements between countries when own families and relatives and siblings so again, back to the positive, Madam Speaker. Look at what is positive in your relationships and your families and your neighborhoods and your work colleagues. Look what's positive in Ontario, in our communities, in our campus clubs. Get to know the members of the other campus clubs. Have that open dialogue. Do it in a positive way, not in a negative way. How about if I invite everybody here to visit Israel? Okay. Even if you've been to Israel before, visit it again. If you've never been to Israel, please take the time out of your busy life. It can be a vacation, it can be a work trip, it can be a volunteer experience. Um, there's organizations that are so happy to encourage you and to help you plan the trip, and even you can get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with the right people. I want to just say that um, this motion has been difficult because it's a bit of a I, I hate when people call it controversial because I don't think it's controversial. I just think it's uncomfortable for people because whenever they try to say something positive 
about Israel, they get yelled at and shut down, and they're told all kinds of nasty, misleading facts. The, the, the fact is, Madam Speaker, I'm expecting this motion to pass because I've had a lot of dialogue with help from the Centre for Israel and Jewish Affairs. I've had a lot of their uh, members and, and uh, people who work there and people who volunteer there have had a lot of dialogue with a lot of the members here and um, to promote open dialogue, to promote passage of this motion. Um, and uh, I want to really thank everybody who's here for supporting not just myself, but supporting all the Jewish organizations and supporting the students on our campuses because really they've endured the brunt of this movement. This movement is failing and it's going to continue to fail and it will fail. My problem is what comes next? We saw Israel apartheid week and when that fell flat on its face because finally people got educated and realized how ridiculous it was, they moved on to the boycott movement. And soon people are going to realize how ridiculous it is and that it isn't, you can't stand behind it and say freedom of speech because it's actually a boycott of voices. What's going to be the next movement to try to vilify Israel, to delegitimize Israel, to stigmatize Israel, to make Jewish students feel uncomfortable identifying as Jews on campus or belonging to Jewish clubs? What is going to be that next movement? I hope it's, um, it's not going to happen. I hope that everybody who is reading about this in the newspaper, watching this on TV, is going to start to look at the facts and to realize that Israel is being unfairly singled out. If you have any issues with any Israeli policies, that's absolutely fine. Write your letters to the editor, um, contact Jewish agencies and ask, maybe I don't have the facts straight, uh, this is what I was told, but not to go about it by boycotting divestment and sanctions. That's not, um, that's not the positive way to, um, to address any issues that you have. Madam Speaker, right here in Canada, um, we have ongoing discussions. Uh, we even have a ministry for dialogue with our uh, native and Aboriginal communities and to address many past injustices that were done. We don't call for boycotts. They don't call for boycott of us. We don't call for boycotts of them. In fact, we're all working together to make Canada and Ontario strong economically, um, improve our environmental um, practices here in the province of Ontario and Canada, and to spread peace throughout the world. This is the holiday season. It's called the season of peace. Peace and goodwill to all men. So on that note, I'm just going to say I'm looking forward to all my colleagues who are going to rise today with me and speak against boycotting voices and boycotting Israel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the member from Bramley Cormalton. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. And before I begin, I also want to acknowledge uh, CJ's tremendous work. They are uh, a paramount of professionalism in the way they conduct themselves and the way they advocate their position, and I want to acknowledge that as well. Um, I think we need to be very honest about the situation we're in as a society. There is a deeply troubling rise in hatred in our society across the boards. We see this across the world in the rise of bigotry, in the rise of prejudice, in the rise of racism. And it is all of our responsibilities together. It is a shared responsibility for us all to recognize this trend and to fight against this trend, to oppose this trend. And we must specifically acknowledge the various forms of hatred that exist in our society. We must call them by name and then we must denounce them. So I want to make it absolutely clear. New Democrats absolutely stand firmly opposed to any movement which encourages hate, prejudice, racism, or intolerance in any way. We stand opposed to those types of movements. We recognize, in fact, Ontario's long-standing relationship and ties between uh, Ontario and Israel. And we want to make sure it's clear that we stand against all forms of oppression. So let's name some of those forms of oppression. We know there's systemic discrimination, and it's systemic dis discrimination based on race. And specifically, I want to name anti-black discrimination as a particular heinous form of discrimination. I want to also acknowledge there's definitely various forms of hatred directed towards religions and ethnicities. And it's important to name those as well. And that's why I specifically name Islamophobia as a problem in our society 
And of course, today I think it's very important for me to direct all the rest of my comments towards uh, anti-Semitism as a growing problem, as a historic problem, and as a current day modern problem. It is a serious issue. This specific hate is something we have to name because it is so pernicious, it is so insidious, insidious. it's been historic and it's left a truly lasting, very negative and heinous impact on our society, a heinous impact. And so it's particularly important for us to name anti-Semitism, to acknowledge it, and then to very repeatedly denounce it. And if we can denounce it in this chamber, it's not enough. We need to continue to do that. The more we can denounce anti-Semitism, it's not only important for our Jewish members of the Jewish community, the solidarity we show with the Jewish community on this issue of anti-Semitism and acknowledging the great suffering of the community is also a way for us to raise awareness of all communities that are suffering, all marginalized communities which suffer. Uh, as a member of a community which is a survivor of a genocide, I have a particularly strong sense of solidarity with the Jewish community as a community that's endured a great and terrible, terrible suffering and tragedy and as a survivor community of, of that genocide, they are a community that we all look towards for leadership in terms of raising awareness and of remembering that heinous, heinous tragedy and heinous, heinous act of violence against our community. It's important for us to acknowledge that by remembering the, the injustice, we actually work towards preventing injustice. That remembering and acknowledging those who've suffered, we actually prevent future injustices, we prevent future generations from suffering, and that's why it is so important for us to acknowledge that. In Canada, I feel we often point fingers in other directions. We look at other communities or other countries and say there is injustice there, there is anti-Semitism there, there, is, there are problems in other countries. And we often fail to acknowledge that anti-Semitism is alive and real here in Ontario. Uh, all too recently, we've seen attacks on members of the Jewish community and particularly on synagogues. And the act of defacing synagogues is an ongoing trend when it comes to one of the more visible forms of anti-Semitism, one of the more visible forms of hatred against the Jewish people. We see that all too often. So we must denounce it. We must name it as a hate crime, not simply an act of mischief, but it's specifically a targeted attempt to create hatred or incite hatred against a community. And that's why it's so important for us to name it as such, to name it as a hate crime. And as always, whenever we name these, these injustices, injustices, we must also commit towards working towards ending all forms of this hatred. In our fight to end anti-Semitism, in our struggle to raise awareness about this injustice, in our struggle to denounce it and to fight against it, we must not be distracted. And we must maintain a focus, a focus that is laser sharp, that is directed at the problem, which is anti-Semitism, and directed at solutions towards solving this problem and to ending this problem. And in our focus, we can't be distracted by conflating criticisms of a government or criticisms of a government's policies with anti-Semitism. That distracts us from the real problem, which is anti-Semitism, and it exists. It's real. We see it. We know that it exists. We hear it in the banter that sometimes goes on, in jokes that sometimes go on. We need to address the root causes, the actual problems, and combat them. But we can't be distracted by conflating the criticism of a government's policies, a, government's, a government itself, and of a people, of a religion, of a faith, of an ethnicity. People around the world have, and here in Canada, we all have a right to dissent and to criticize. Specifically, I'll give you an example here in Canada. I would, I would suggest it would be well within the right of many people to criticize Canada for its deplorable treatment of the indigenous community. It's absolutely within the right of people. From direct genocides to a cultural genocide uh, based on residential schools, the ongoing systemic discrimination of indigenous people and their deplorable conditions, it would be absolutely in the right. It, people would be a, a fully justified to raise a concern about the treatment of, of indigenous people. But it would absolutely not permit people to incite hatred against Canadians. It would absolutely not be permissible for people to say, 
to incite any sort of sentiment of hating the people of the country, they're hating the actual community. But concern around the government's policies, historic and present day, criticism of that policy is absolutely appropriate and in fact a part of a democratic society. We can criticize the policies of the United States, for example, without hating Americans. We can criticize Saudi Arabia's government and still combat Islamophobia. It's absolutely important for us to recognize that peaceful demonstrations, discussions, debate, discourse, whether we agree with them or not, if they're expressed towards the criticism of a government or its policies are absolutely within our, within our democracy, something appropriate, whether we agree or disagree. And so we must similarly separate the criticism of the, of the government of Israel or its policies from criticism of its people. That distinction must be made. There is in no way, that, that should never be conflated. A criticism of a country or its policies, particularly its government, should never mean it's a criticism of the people of that country or the ethnicity or the religion of that country. People must be able to have the right to criticize the state's policies or its decisions. People must be able to encourage a state to follow through on their obligations, whether they're international human rights obligations, whether they're international environmental rights agreements. People must be able to raise their concerns, but we should never allow people to raise those concerns in a way that inflames hatred against the people of that community. So, there are serious concerns with respect to the human rights violations endured by Palestinian people. We must support the freedom to raise these concerns. People have that right, and we should support people's right to do that. In a free and democratic society, peaceful advocacy directed towards a government or its policies must never be silenced. We should allow that discourse to happen. We should allow that to occur in a free and democratic society. The only limitation we place on freedom of speech is specifically hate speech. Speech which directs people to hate a particular community to create violence against a particular race, ethnicity, members of a community. That is something that is simply not acceptable in our society, nor should we ever support it. So we cannot support a motion which in effect seeks to ban the right to dissent. That is one of the most fundamental rights of any society, the ability to raise your voice in opposition, your ability to criticize, your ability to have dissent. The right to criticize, the right to raise awareness, the right to advocate for a marginalized people is something that we must protect. Anti-Semitism is real. It exists and it is growing. We can't be led to believe that in some way it's been addressed, it's something of the past, it's not something that we need to address moving forward. Anti-Semitism is something we have to denounce. We have to denounce it together. We must use all tools available to denounce it. We must use education. We must use awareness. We must use legislation where it's appropriate and we must absolutely use enforcement. We must use all the tools that we have as a society so that we can combat this very serious and very real problem. However, we can't allow ourselves to be distracted by a movement which seeks to criticize a government and conflate that with the real issue of anti-Semitism. We can't conflate anti-Semitism with a movement that seeks to perhaps influence a government to change its course of action. These types of discourse, these types of, of engagement are something that we don't have, and we shouldn't in this legislative assembly, in this province or in this country, we shouldn't silence. We should, in, in fact, encourage more advocacy work towards denouncing anti-Semitism. We should encourage more awareness around the ills, the impacts. And the impacts aren't only to the Jewish community. Anti-Semitism hurts all of us. Hatred against a community poisons the entire society. We must ensure that we work together to solve this problem. This isn't something that's going to be dealt with by one group alone. We need to show solidarity with groups and movements which seek to end anti-Semitism, which raise awareness about the, the harms that it impacts on not only the Jewish community, but our society at large. And we need to show that solidarity to ensure that we stand up 
and show that our society is a society that believes in inclusivity, believes in accepting differences, it believes in celebrating those differences, it believes in diversity, and believes in celebrating that diversity. That's the country, that's the province, that's the city that we live in, that's the type of society we need to build, and I, I support the, the members' concerns around anti-Semitism, and as New Democrats, we stand always opposed to Thank you. Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much, uh, Speaker. I am uh, truly honored to have the opportunity to rise in my place here this afternoon in this chamber uh, to lend not only my voice, but my very strong support for the motion that's being brought forward. Um, by the member from Thornhill. I had, uh, I had the, uh, the privilege, Speaker, to sit alongside uh, the mem member who has brought forward this motion and also uh, members from, uh, from the Jewish community, leadership from CJA uh, earlier today. Uh, and I had in that, uh, in that opportunity the chance to read, uh, uh, to read a statement with respect to the motion and some of the broader themes that are, are part and parcel of what this motion is all about, Speaker. Uh, there will be others uh, from the Government Caucus who will be speaking on this motion this afternoon, and I look forward to hearing their remarks. I do want to take a very quick moment, in addition to thanking the member from Thornhill for sponsoring and bringing forward this motion, and to thank uh, the leadership from the community, CJA in particular, many, of course, who are here uh, in the gallery with us today for their, uh, for their staunch support of ensuring that all parties working on this can find a way to get it right, Speaker, and I think that's what we've managed to do. Uh, here with this particular motion. I know in particular there are a number of members on our side of the uh, side of the aisle, Speaker, including the member from Eglinton Lawrence, uh, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation, and the member from New York Centre, among many, many others who have spent years working hard and working relentlessly to make sure uh, that um, uh, th this particular issue uh, is one that gets dealt with and gets dealt with in a way that is appropriate, Speaker. And of course, much of what we see in the discussion and much of what we see in the motion today uh, can, uh, can, also be, um, can also be captured in, in comments that the Premier made when she was in Israel back in May. Really quickly, um, Speaker, from, uh, from my statement earlier this morning, and I think it's something I want to point out with my remaining time, I did say, and it bears repeating, I would be remiss if I failed to recognize that our government supports the right of individuals and groups to freely express their views without fear of discrimination or persecution, whether here in Ontario or in the Middle East. Freedom of speech is something that all Canadians value, and we must and we do vigorously defend that right. However, Speaker, and this is the most important part to consider in the context of this discussion, however, we oppose those who spread hatred and fear under the guise of free speech, Speaker. What we have seen here in the province of Ontario and, frankly, beyond our borders, specifically around the BDS movement, Speaker, uh, goes right to the heart of what I just said a second ago. We all support the values and the principles that are wrapped up around the notion of defending and standing up for free speech, but we need to draw the line. We need to draw the line collectively in this chamber and beyond and send a very clear message that to do that and to confuse the notion of free speech with what the BDS movement uh, propagates is not appropriate. And, Speaker, that's why not only as an individual, as a minister, uh, but also as the member of Provincial Parliament for Vaughan, I am very proud to support this particular motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize the member from York Simcoe. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And it is my pleasure today to rise in support of the motion brought forward by my colleague, the MPP for Thornhill. This motion recognizes the shared liberal democratic values between Ontario and Israel. It rejects the concept of different treatment from Israel to other countries, including the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement. Today's motion rejects hate and anti-Semitism and embraces tolerance. In 1996, the then Liberal government signed the Canada-Israel Free Trade Agreement since then, trade between Canada and Israel has more than doubled to approximately $1.4 billion <coughs> annually. Recently, in 2015, pardon me, <coughs> recently, in 2015, Ontario and Israel signed a bilateral trade agreement. 
pardon me, worth more than $900 million. This year, both Premier Wynne and the Mayor of Toronto, John Tory, led independent trade missions to Israel. As a direct result of the Premier's mission, 44 new agreements were signed, worth over $180 million. This created hundreds of new jobs in Ontario at a time when far too many Ontarians are finding it tough to make ends meet. Trade is good, it is good for Canada, it is good for Ontario, and it is good for Israel. Trade is an engine of growth and an opportunity to reach out from our society and culture to those around the world. Trade is an opportunity to exchange more than just goods and services. It is an opportunity to share values, culture, and our way of life. The boycott divestment sanctions movement claims to be a movement for freedom, justice, and equality. However, the reality is that this movement is thinly veiled anti-Semitism. Exactly. BDS is discrimination. Just as boycotts have targeted Jews and other vulnerable minorities throughout history, today BDS activists call for a boycott of the citizens of the world's only Jewish state and the only liberal democracy in the Middle East. The BDS movement isn't pro-Palestinian, it's simply anti-Israel. BDS threatens the livelihood of tens of thousands of Palestinians who work side by side with Israelis. Economic cooperation, not boycotts, will help foster peace. These boycotts have, take many forms, telling consumers not to produce or not to purchase Israeli products, calling for Canadian universities to cut ties with Israeli professors. This is not tolerant. This is not in the spirit of globalism. It is pure discrimination. BDS undermines peace, not just in Israel, but also in our communities. <clears throat> the, a recent research shows that they have been a strong pre 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 predictor of anti-Semitic hostility. And today, across campuses, our Jewish students uh, fear for their safety. Uh, university and college campuses are intended to be a place of learning and growth, of expanding one's mind to new ideas, not shutting down their ideological opponents. I hope members of all parties will join me in supporting this motion and to support tolerance and multiculturalism. Thank you. Further debate, I recognize the Minister of Children and Youth Services and Minister responsible for anti-racism. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Um, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. And I want to uh, first uh, start by thanking the member from Thornhill uh, for her motion and her uh, advocacy on this issue. And I also want to thank the uh, uh, Minister of Transportation and many members from our side, uh, Minister of Health, the Minister from Eglinton Lawrence, and other members who have uh, been very passionate about the issue in regards to any form of discrimination and uh, prejudice that's, uh, that's attributed to any uh, group here in the province of Ontario. Um, let me start by saying, Madam Speaker, that um, like all members of our government, uh, we condemn any form of racism or prejudice, uh, including anti-Semitism here in the province of Ontario. It's completely unacceptable. and. Uh, we don't believe that by building walls, by boycotting, by building walls, by, um, uh, by, you know, by stopping that conversation uh, that takes place between uh, Ontario and a uh, place like Israel is something that's uh, good for this country, uh, let alone good for this, uh, this province. So when our Premier went to uh, Israel to build relationships, it's something that we believe is good for uh, Canada and, um, and, uh, and good for future generations of Canadians. Um, I had uh, a school in here earlier today. Uh, it was uh, the, uh, uh, the North Toronto Christian School, and I was downstairs talking to them about this very issue, and I actually invited them in here to come and listen because it was, uh, you know, I think it's important, especially for young people, um, to, uh, to understand the issues uh, uh, of today that seem to divide us and uh, be aware 
um, that there's strength when we come together. I want to thank members from uh, the Jewish community here uh, today uh, who are here because of this motion, and thank you for the, their, uh, their support in, uh, in, uh, in supporting uh, the member opposite in bringing this forward. Um, I, um, I've been going around the province uh, having conversations about racism, anti-Sikhism, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, uh, all different forms of hate across the province of Ontario. And we've probably had uh, you know, well over, I would say anywhere between three to 4,000 people show up to these meetings. And um, you know, many members on our side have been part of those conversations. I would actually encourage the uh, Conservative Party to at least you know, try to show up to one of these meetings. They haven't showed up to one yet, uh, but there's one in Ottawa this week, and I invite the member from Ottawa to come and uh, join us at the conversation. Um, I think it's important for us as Ontarians to have these conversations and to continue uh, to build on uh, the goodwill that, um, that we have with the State of Israel and, uh, and continue to build a, a positive environment here in Ontario that does not tolerate any form of hate and discrimination. And again, thank you to the member for bringing forward this motion uh, here today. Thank you. Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the member from Niagara West Glenbrook. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I want to thank uh, my colleague, the Honourable Member for Thornhill, for her advocacy for the Jewish people and her stand against discrimination with this important motion. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to rise today for my first speech uh, in this House, and I'm honoured to start here where my predecessor, Tim Hudak, left off. Uh, so it's uh, definitely an honour to address this important motion. I'm reminded of a Yiddish proverb, the world rests on the tip of a tongue. This proverb reminds us, Speaker, that words matter. This motion, although just words, matters a great deal. The motion before the legislator today deals with the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, also known as BDS, against the State of Israel. The BDS movement is poison, poison to those engaged in it and poison to the well-being of the Palestinian people and our allies, the State of Israel. BDS is vindictive, short-sighted and fails to improve the lives of either Palestinians or Israelis. At its root, the BDS movement is based in a dislike of a minority based on its nationality and ethnicity. At its root, this movement is steeped in anti-Semitic discrimination. This movement is not pro-Palestinian, it is anti-Israel, it is anti-Jewish, and it is anti-Semitic. It poisons, it poisons whatever potential for goodwill there exists between Israel and the Palestinian people and promotes hatred. This is a very necessary motion. Anti-Semitism is alive and well. And we need to fight against the ethnic intolerance and, to put it bluntly, xenophobia that BDS personifies, which impacts many of Jewish descent, including here in Canada. Gila mentioned that she uh, just, uh, just recently, or she, she didn't get off a uh, university campus recently, but I did. And I can speak about the impact, the toxic environment that's being created by the BDS movement on, uh, on campuses across the country and across Ontario. It's creating a toxic environment for Jewish students and their friends. In the most recent annual audit of anti-Semitic events co-authored by Bene Brith and the League for Human Rights, over 1,600 cases of harassment, violence and vandalism conducted against individuals were documented here in Canada because of hatred towards not only the Jewish people, but their nation. Don't take it from just one source. The Toronto Police Department released their 2015 annual hate crime statistical report and in it they found that the Jewish population is the most subject to hate crimes for their ethnic background and heritage. The reality of the matter is that anti-Semitism is egged on by enablers such as the BDS movement. Let's be very clear about BDS. It's not only an anti-Jewish movement, but it's anti-Palestinian by threatening the jobs of many Palestinian employees. In 2012, Israel accounted for 81% of Palestinian exports. Now, BDS supporters want to get rid of the huge trade surplus Israel extends to Palestine and offer nothing in its place. This trade is a good thing. It builds trust, it builds understanding, and trade builds successes that can be built on over time. We should be encouraging dialogue and trade between Israel and the Palestinian people, not vilifying Israel, a nation with a stellar human rights record, the BDS movement 
poisons rather than assists dialogue towards a peace process. The BDS movement tells those of Jewish descent and background, you're not welcome here. It tells Jewish shopkeepers and tradespeople that they're not good enough. The BDS movement fails to promote the respectful dialogue necessary to move Palestinian and Israeli relationships forward, and we should firmly oppose it. I'm very pleased to be supporting this motion. I urge all members in the government, be government benches and also those in the other opposition benches who believe in tolerance and inclusion to, to stand with me against discrimination and bigotry and support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the member from Eglinton Lords. Yes, uh, tolerance. Tolerance. Uh, this week, I was very proud to be part of the legislature of all parties. We stood up for tolerance when we said no to homophobia and discrimination against gays. As you know, we've got a lot of hate mail this week from those who oppose Bill 28, the All Parents Are Equal Act. They said, do not be tolerant towards homosexuals. Do not be tolerant towards uh, parents that have, have children that are gay. We have to be consistent when we talk about tolerance. So in this bill here, this motion which I support, it really talks about the essence of Judaism. And the essence of Judaism is that they are in Israel because no one else would take them. Canada would not take Jews. The United States would not take Jews. They had to fight to go back to their land of Abraham, and they've been fighting ever since. They only make up one and a half percent of all the land mass of the Middle East, yet they're under constant attack from ISIS, from Iran, always under attack. And that's why you can't separate the Jewish people from the Jewish nation. And they say, well, it's all right to criticize Israel, uh, but you can be nice to Jews. Well, I say hogwash. You can't separate the two. Just like you can't separate tolerance against homosexuals and gays and tolerance against everybody else. You've got to be consistent when you talk about tolerance. And here, the BDS tries to maneuver this idea that we're just against Israel, we're not against the people. Hogwash. The BDS is an insidious attack on Jewish people Yesterday at Ryerson University, a group of Jewish students tried to move a motion to have Jewish Education Week celebrated at Ryerson University. They were blocked from doing that. So this isn't a theoretical international issue. This is happening in our campuses at York University, Ryerson last night. Our students in my riding, grandsons and granddaughters of Holocaust survivors, are afraid to go to school physically attacked, emotionally attacked on a daily basis. This is going on, folks. It's not just happening in Israel. This kind of insidious attack of intolerance is being proposed and being exposed and promoted by BDS. That's why this motion is a time to stand up and say no to this type of intolerance towards Israel and the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you for the debate. For the debate, I recognize the member from Nepean Carlton. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's my pleasure today to support my dear friend Gila Marto and this uh, and and uh, this positive motion on a very hateful initiative put forward by some on university campuses in the great province of Ontario. Uh, like my friend Gila says, her name is Joy. So I want to talk about something very positive. In 2014, I travelled to Israel. And I've always been a supporter of our Jewish community in this province, particularly in my riding of the P. and Carlton, where we have a number of beautiful, welcoming, and open synagogues in Barhaven and in Craig Henry. But it wasn't until I actually traveled to Israel that I understood what a contrast she actually is. She is a contrast of antiquity and modernity, a state that is galvanized by religion, but is secular. And it's driven by democratic values, the only democracy in the Middle East, the only democracy in the Middle East that allows for a gay pride parade, and the only democracy that has a functioning government. 
I'd note that in Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas is now in the 11th year of a four-year term. But the contradictions are much more than that. When I was in Israel, I understood a little bit about the security threats that the people of Israel deal with every day. We would often go to checkpoints. I went to Lebanon, in the corner where Hamas was as far as I am from the people in the gallery. I went to the Golan Heights, where stray bullets were coming in and shelling from the night because of the conflict in Syria. And I went to a place called Sederat, where we toured a caterpillar disguised as a bomb shelter for the children in that community. I went to Yad Vashem, where I recognized that my grandfather fought in a war against tyranny, and at the same time, the Jewish people of this community, well, they were threatened. And I saw that Yad Vashem when I saw little tiny black slippers under a glass floor to recognize that Canada and Israel came of age at the same time. Israel as a result of World War II, but it was also one of the proudest, most defining moments of the people of this country. I once uh, got to meet Ehud Barak. He was the former uh, defense minister as well as the former prime minister of Israel. I met him with Peter McKay at a state dinner. And he held up his glass and he said to Canada and Israel, best friends, we are together the largest country in the world. Well, I'm glad that you all had a good laugh at that. We actually felt it was quite prophetic because we are so close and we have worked so well together over the years fighting for freedom against terrorism. And I would hope that together in this assembly, we would join together to fight anti-Semitism, hatred, bigotry, and the terrorism of our students on campuses across this province. So with that, I conclude with M. Yisrael Kaim. Because I'm Yisrael Kaim. Very I, close. I did it wrong? Okay. Very close. Thanks, Gila. <laughs> anyway, I'm, uh, I'm proud to support my friend and colleague and to the, to the people from uh, Sija and from the Jewish community here today in Ontario. I will stand by you as much as I will stand by my colleague. And I know in the assembly here today, we may not get unanimity, but we will get a majority. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Further debate, further debate. I recognize the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to commend the, the member from Thornhill for this motion. Uh, it is a good motion and deserves support of all members in this House. Um, I, want to, um, I just want to say that we need to do a lot more than pass motions, though, and I think the member would agree. Uh, when I was mayor of Winnipeg, I rebuilt the relationship with Bear Sheva and my friend Jakob Turner, who was not just the mayor, but was a, a and I think, 78 years old, an Air Force fighter pilot, uh, which we don't have too many mayors in Canada are, which give you some dimensions of that. Uh, we also built the Jewish Community Centre in Winnipeg, and we reached out during periods of horrible anti-Semitism in Argentina to very proudly bring more Jews from Argentina than just about any other place. I also have been on, we also established the Winnipeg Refugee Settlement Centre for Falasha Jews uh, in, uh, in Beersheba, paid for both by the Asper Foundation and the City of Winnipeg uh, in that very strong relationship. And I made many trips with the Canada-Israel Committee uh, to, to Israel. That kind of activism, and it was important to me because I'm not Jewish, and my friend Gail Asper, uh, who uh, ran, uh, all, was, chaired all my campaigns, and for, with whom her and her father, we worked together on the Human Rights Museum, which with this government put $5 million into Winnipeg, and I'm very proud of that. And when you go in there, you see the stories of Sikhs beside the stories of Jews beside the stories of Muslims. And I miss my friend Izzy so much because very few Canadians had such a global, global role. It's also important that we never, ever, ever back away from our commitment to Israel, but we also understand well, the members right from Nepean who talked about, you know, it's often said it's a, it's a good home and a bad neighborhood when you talk about Israel. But the situations in Syria and the situations with the Palestinians are also terrible. And when I went there, and I too toured many parts and in many, many trips there, went into Palestinian communities, met young democratic Palestinians who are trying to achieve self-determination and remembering the Jordanian government shot 30,000 of them. And I just want to make sure 
that we stand also against Islamophobia and join the Israelis thank that are you. trying to work thank to you. support Palestinians thank as well. Thank you. I return to the member from Cornyn to wrap up. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I'm very pleased to uh, rise today and thank all my colleagues who spoke so supportively. And I would just remind, um, you know, I, I respect everything that the member from Bramley Gormalton said, but I would just remind him that the Jewish community finds the BDS movement anti-Semitic, hateful. The Jewish students on campus feel intimidated and worse. Um, as uh, my colleague from Nepean Carlton alluded to, it's almost like being the victim of terrorism on the campuses. It's a terror campaign against the Jewish students. And maybe it's not presented that way. Maybe when you read an article or you Google something, maybe you don't feel the emotion. Um, but the uh, member f uh, uh, from uh, Bramley Gormalton is a member, as he said, he's a member of a visible minority. And I know that he's experienced in his life some very difficult and intimidating circumstances. And I would like to remind him that our university campus students aren't as always as emotionally strong as he is to deal with it. Um, I want to thank not just the Jewish students and the Jewish community organizations that are here, but all the Christian groups and churches that are so supportive of Israel and so um, adamantly against the BDS movement. And I also want to mention that on this Monday, there's a big gala uh, by Hasbara Fellowships. And one of the honorees is here, Sheer Barzilai is here, but one, but one of the other honorees is a Muslim couple, Sohail and Rahil Raza, and it's husband and wife team, and they're Muslim, and they support Israel, and they talk anti-BDS. So I want to just mention that this is something we're all in together. It's not just a Jewish community issue, that the Jewish community is not just focused on Israel, that it's focused on everything in Ontario that, can, that we can do to make life better and better quality of life, focused on disability and health and everything else that we worry and we talk about here in the legislature. Thank you, Madam Speaker. this item at the end of private member public business, but before I call order for the day, I want to remind members that you are not allowed to address each other by